Thailand outlook. สวัสดีครับ Welcome to another episode of Thailand Outlook, the News Digest program, broadcasting from Radio Thailand FM 88 and also online at nbt. prd. co. th. I'm k a t a n g with Tachi. Today we start our episode of Thailand Outlook with an ambitious venture. The Ministry of Industry is points to transform Thailand into an ASEAN halal hub. The Industry Minister will spearhead this initiative, including crucial talks in、um, Saudi Arabia. Our country, Thailand, is strategically positioning itself as a central halal hub in ASEAN, with a focused initiative led by the industry minister. The plan includes crucial discussions with the Saudi Standards,、uh, Metrology, and Quality Organization, emphasizing the importance of standardization in halal products. Now, this initiative aims to. Developed a halal economic corridor across southern provinces, enhancing livelihoods while expanding the scope of halal products and services. The move is expected to boost Thailand's industrial sector GDP by as much as 1.2 percent in、um, as many as three years, tapping into a global halal market projected to reach 2.32 trillion U.S. dollars. Thailand's leap into the halal market, with its recent significant food exports,、um, also showcases its potential to become、um, a key player in this rapidly growing sector. This is a visionary move towards economic diversification and global market integration. Up next, we are looking at a series of spectacular astronomical events set to grace Thailand's skies in 2024. Our next story today takes us beyond the horizon as Thailand is set to witness a celestial spectacle in 2024. From lunar eclipses to planetary alignments, let's gaze into the astronomical events that awaits us. 2024 is set to be an astronomical delight for Thais. With the National Astronomical Research Institute of Thailand, or NARIT, announcing an exciting lineup of celestial events, the year kicks off with a micro full moon on Ma Kapu Sha Day, followed by rare planetary alignments and moon eclipses. Internationally, the year is marked by several landmark space missions, including NASA's Artemis II and JAXA's Martian Moon Exploration. And within Thailand, advancements in astronomy are highlighted by the launch of a new radio telescope and the innovative Napa Stargazing app. Now,、uh, Narit's role extends to atmospheric science, contributing to the study of PM 2.5 dust origins. Also, the amazing dark sky in Thailand project further promotes astronomical tourism, with the construction of a new observatory in Phitsen Lok Province. And these developments not only enhance Thailand's space research capabilities, but also foster、um, a greater appreciation of the cosmos among the public. And this is really an exciting year ahead for Thai astronomy enthusiasts. And our final segment today brings us to the picturesque fields of Pisanlo Province again, where a vibrant display of everlasting daisies has become a new tourist magnet. Let's delve into how this floral spectacle is adding color to Thailand's tourism palette. Pisanlo Province is currently adorned with a sea of everlasting daisies, attracting visitors to its 1,200 ride of flower field at. Puhin Rongkla National Park, and these unique daisies, known for their enduring beauty, are part of the Puhin Rongkla Forest Development Project initiated by His Majesty King Pumipun Adunyade the Great. Initially aimed at combating deforestation, the project has evolved into an ecological tourism marvel. And besides the daisies, the region is known for its cultivation of cold climate crops. Uh, like strawberries and Arabica coffee beans, the discovery of this floral treasure,、uh, which is nestled near the park's famous maple forest and Himalayan cherry trees, has added a new dimension to the province's tourist offerings. 
And this development not only boosts local tourism, but also highlights the successful integration of conservation and community-based agricultural practices in the province, and especially in our country. This is um, such a testament to the harmonious blend of conservation and tourism. And from the strategic developments of Thailand as an ASEAN Hello Hub, to the wondrous celestial events in the skies and the enchanting everlasting daisies of Pizza Nolo, we have seen how Thailand is now evolving in various spheres. I'm Katang with Dotted, and thank you for joining us. I will see you again on the next episode of Thailand Outlook. Bye for now. Sweaty crap. Part of the push to strengthen Thailand's commerce capabilities is the Land Bridge Mega Project, facilitating the transport of goods and people from Rayong on the Andaman coast to the Gulf of Thailand via Chumpon. The bridge has massive potential for the nation and the region. Overcoming current obstacles and introducing new opportunities, Thailand's land bridge is a key national policy. A new regional cross-border payment system recently implemented by Southeast Asian nations has the potential to deepen economic integration among member countries, bringing the ASEAN bloc closer to its goal of economic centrality. It is the first agreement of its kind, and it paves the way for other advancements, such as instant international bank transfers. The program is now operational in Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, and Singapore, with the Philippines set to join shortly. An ASEAN local currency transaction framework would enable business-to-business -business trade settlement without the use of foreign currencies. Thailand, Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia, and the Philippines have signed a Memorandum of Understanding or MOU on regional cross-border payments to support micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises or MSMEs and migrant workers. The scheme aims to support and facilitate cross-border trade settlements, investments, remittances, and other economic activities in Southeast Asia, with the ultimate goal of establishing an inclusive financial ecosystem. As a result, MSMEs will benefit the most from an expected increase in consumer spending and robust tourism. Regional connectivity is regarded as critical for reducing the region's reliance on external currencies, such as the US dollar for cross-border transactions, particularly among businesses. The recent strength of the US dollar has resulted in weaker ASEAN currencies, which harms those economies because the majority of the bloc's members are net energy and food importers. Similarly, the ASEAN QR code demonstrates how QR code technology can assist banks in developing a cutting-edge framework to promote economic recovery, streamline procedures, and improve customer service. Thanks to highly developed software, banks can quickly integrate QR codes for practical, smooth, and safe transactions that ensure highest client satisfaction. It was also a priority initiative promoted by Indonesia at the recent ASEAN Summit in May, and the majority of signatories expect to have the system operational by the end of 2023. Following that, the regional QR payment system will be expanded to include locations outside of ASEAN. Conversely, the use of QR codes makes it easier to pay for goods and services. People who work or live abroad will find it easier to send money back home and tourists from ASEAN countries will find it easier to travel within the region with less hassle. Nearly 3 million Malaysian tourists visited Indonesia and Thailand in 2019, so a QR system that allows them to pay in their own currency at a favorable exchange rate is an incentive to boost tourism and foster ASEAN regionalism.